you. You look so good together sitting there. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Congratulations on the series. I've seen the first three episodes so far, so I've only gotten a little bit. Um, but you guys are great in it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. That. Okay, how would you say, was it acting and pretending like you didn't see the ghost? So when like Peyton List and Milo scenes with them, how awkward was that or was it not awkward? It was, it was hard for sure at the beginning, walking past, pretending we didn't know them, we didn't see them, was definitely a challenge, but it was fun. You could learn to like see through them by the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> was there any moments that you like broke down and laughed and you couldn't handle it or you always stayed and composed? I feel like um, a lot of the time early on, I was trying so actively to like not look at Peyton and, mm. and, and the ghosts that it just looks awkward. Like this entire part of the room is just like off, <laughs> off limits, which doesn't look like any human being would act. So yep. <laughs> that was definitely a, a learning curve. Mm -hmm. I think I definitely ran into Pay a few times. Yep. And you're like, oh, sorry. So like, oh, what was yeah. that? And then just walk, keep walking. <laughs> And was it awkward for you, like when you were like filming with the ghosts and Peyton and Milo and stuff to act like they weren't there? How was that experience for you? I mean, uh, it was it was fun. I, the cool thing is that we would we would film everything twice. So one without the ghost world and one with them. So we would do like, let's say, five takes of me acting to the wind <laughs> and then five takes of of them spectating the living so it's a lot of having to build uh that sort of thick skin against the background actors that go what is this dude doing i can do that i know this the background actors are like i don't know it's just looking funny but you got to make those choices the camera's rolling you just gotta pretend that they're there <laughs> yeah i think for me it was a lot easier because he actually spoke to maddie so right my character didn't so i just sort of had to make sure not to look at her when she's passing by. <laughs> yeah. It's gotta be so awkward though, because like obviously you're acting, so you know not to look, but naturally, you know, if someone's walking by, you're yeah. looking at them and like you have to pretend. So I was excited to ask that because like everybody's like opinions is different about how you guys filmed and everything. <laughs> what was it like? I've asked everybody else so far, what was it like you guys are ghosts, but having acting and pretending people aren't looking at you? Mm. Honestly, it was easy for us because we didn't have to do anything because we yeah. could we could see them. It was, mm -hmm. I think, more difficult for everybody else to have to like, especially walking down the hallway scenes. They had to look like they weren't trying to not, not hit us. Yeah. That that was interesting because the hallways were small, but mm -hmm. otherwise pretty easy for yeah. us. Yeah, it was amazing how well everyone adjusted to it. Yeah, it was. I mean, I think there were moments where it was a little more difficult, but I think we laugh more now watching it because it plays so great on screen, the cutting between whether or not someone can see her there. It's so much fun, but the cast really adapted. What I was so impressed with, sometimes the ghosts will have scenes and we'll just have living people walking between them um, and they never broke. We did laugh during, uh, there's a scene between Wally and Maddie at a football game. Well, it's not in the game, it's not in the stadium, it's outside the stadium and people were going to the restroom between them. And at one point, one of the mascots in a the, large like, big costume box, yes, walked between them. We were like, oh, this kid, <laughs> yeah. can't get this on film. Yeah, <laughs> but they didn't break, they kept it together. Yeah, a very emotional scene between the yeah. two of them. And here comes this giant fox. <laughs> big bushy tail. <laughs> That's so, that's impressive though, because I feel like I would have been like, I just would have broke. Like if Peyton was like oh, in yeah. my face, like at the locker scene too, where she's so close, I'd be like, no, stop Peyton, please. Like, <laughs> they were all pros, they, they, they worked through it. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, so say you found out you had three days to live in like your real life. What is one thing that you make sure that you do, or maybe like one person you have a conversation with? Three days to live? Yep, three days. 72 hours, oh. Oh. Gosh, I mean, I'm gonna go wholesome and say my family. I gotta, gotta spend that time with my family. I was gonna say like, I'll go skydiving and then I'll rob a <laughs> bank and then buy everything and then bury the treasure and make up. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll rob a bank, <laughs> I'll buy all of this jewelry, all of this treasure, I'll bury it and then I'll make a little clues and judge them up to the treasure. Two ends of the spectrum right here. <laughs> It's a family time, and you said no rob everything. Yeah. And rob everybody in shambles. Everybody has to figure it out. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Sarah I starts crying. I'm like about to. No, okay. <laughs> no. I would. I would. Um. I would tell everyone I love them. I would like run to every person yeah. that I've ever loved to be like, you know, I love you. 
<laughs> yeah. That's true. That's right? very true. Yeah. I would definitely make them all come eat food with me though. Yeah, I would eat food, for the whole food. three days straight, yeah. not stop, no sleep, no coffee, 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 food, food, food. I'd say meet me at this restaurant and we're going here. We're yeah. spending all of my money. No, all the money's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 <laughs> I'm not leaving a penny for, for anybody. I would actually take, I would say everyone meet me in Vegas. I hate Vegas. But we're going, gonna go and we're gonna spend out. everything. I would be there. I would be there, heartbeat. but I mean, it'd be really sad. <laughs> she, she, you're still crying in Vegas. Yeah, I'm like crying in the corner. Like, <laughs> we're like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I love you. I love you. I love you. What about you, Nick? Same thing um, for Vegas. Oh, <laughs> I would do. Um, I sorry what? <laughs> three days me. left. Three days. Three days. <laughs> um, I would. I would. Yeah. I would say I love you to everybody I know and make them eat with me. But I probably wouldn't go to Vegas. I'd mm -hmm. probably just do like L.A. or something. Yeah, Vegas LA? sounds horrible. I'm just. But I would spend all of my money. Yeah. There's no money left. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'd go to the woods. You would. You would. <laughs> Cry. Yeah. With everyone I love. <laughs> <laughs> what unique answers. I think Rainbow said that she'd rob a bank and wow. bury each other. Rainbow said that? Yeah. Oh my god. The angel? <laughs> yeah. I think I would just want to like leave the world doing a good deed. That's what I'll do. Something nice. Post event. I, I, I feel like in terms of having a conversation with someone, there goes all the love confessions. Boom. One, 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 one. <laughs> I'll be make I'll be making those phone calls. But in terms of, of what to do if it were my last day on earth. I think that my way of uh, defying the universe and resisting the odds is instead of doing something crazy, I'm just going to be so relaxed and because that's all you get, that's all you have when you know you're going to die is is to not give them what they want. Just just vibe, just you and vibes. Just sleep, <laughs> just sleep. There you go. <laughs> okay, if you had three days to live, okay, three days to live, and you had you could do one thing. What is the one thing that you make sure you do, or one conversation that you have? Oh, ah, this is why I love Young Hollywood. They ask the good questions. Um, I know. Okay, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing as long as I'm with my friends and as long as I'm with my dog. I'm going to bring my dog everywhere I'm going. But if I were to do something, I don't know. I would probably like, my mom's in New York right now. I would, on the first day, I would go to New York. I would see a show with my mom. On the second day, I'd go to LA. I'd bring all my friends together. We'd have like a beach day. We'd go to an escape room. I don't know. We'd see a movie or something. And on the last day, I'd just take time, me and Louie, and, until the end of the world. I don't know what the situation is where we have three days to live, but I don't know. I would spend the time with my dog, Louie. I love him. Who do you personally think is the best detective from the cast that would investigate your own life? Um, I would go with Milo. I was gonna say, gonna say the exact same thing. Milo is the best detective. He, you should see him in, in escape rooms. Yeah, that kid. Yeah, and and while we were shooting it, he in his room he had like this uh, Bristol board with red yarn linking mm -hmm. all the characters. It was like the the, the workings of a madman, and and so I feel like I, I trust him to sort out my my, my your, your murder. <laughs> Everything that's going on. When did you guys watch any of it yet? Have you seen it through? I've only seen the first three episodes. Same. Okay, so you're, everyone's on the board. We're in the same boat. Oh. Three episodes. You'd think, you know, you'd watch the whole thing by now because you're in it, but no, nope, we're all just getting three episodes. <laughs> That's cute that you said escape room because your cast members, um, they were like, oh, he does the best in the escape rooms. Look, I, I don't mean to toot my own horn here or anything, <laughs> but I, I'm an escape room artist. This is what I do. I love escape rooms. And you know, th this brings me to my next point, which okay. is I love, I love to solve. And this... <laughs> This TV show is a puzzle in a show. It's a murder mystery. And I, I was like the person in the cast who had like everybody's photos on the wall with like pieces of yarn connecting everything. I was really they said to that too. Everything. They said I, that you had This is not a joke. Like, I feel like this is like people think that I'm messing around, but I really wanted to crack that code. And I didn't because the show is so brilliantly written. So if you guys crack it before me, let me know. It's funny because too, because you like you just get booked as a jock in these shows too. So do you like being that football player type vibe? Yeah, totally. Look, my my philosophy as Milo is get as much out of life as you possibly can. When I was in high school, I was doing theater, but I was also like playing volleyball pretty competitively. And I I love sports. I'm like the only like 
thespian who watches football every you know Sunday. But I, uh, yeah, no, I, I that was a really cool part about playing Wally. He has like the stereotypical '80s jock vibe going to him, but he's also multi-layered. He's got a lot of stuff in his personal life that you guys will figure out if you keep watching the show. But I definitely didn't want to lose that jockey aspect of him because he's cool. He's cool. <laughs> if you were watching as a fan from the first three episodes, say, who do you think you would think who had done it? Xavier. For sure. It's always it's always the boyfriend. It's always the husband. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems uh, that doesn't that seem a little bit obvious? Well, no. <laughs> I don't know. I would say, um, <clears throat> I would have to say Claire. <laughs> How would Claire? The, the, the sweet, innocent Claire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Spencer, do you drive a pickup truck in real life? <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, I, I loved that truck, though. It, I, I, there, it was funny, though, because um, I, I had to, like, move the seat up quite a bit. <laughs> I, I felt very thing. emasculated in this truck. I was kind of just like looking over the wheel. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, truck. No, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll stick to my Honda Civic. <laughs> yeah, I was like, have you, did you drive a pickup truck? Like if that would have been funny, it was your own truck. Yeah, it was a cool truck. You should have asked to keep the truck. Yeah, that's a big ass. That's one request. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you had to choose a character to investigate something in your personal lives as well. Who are you choosing? Because who do you think is the best detective from the show? Mm, the character, right? Not the actor. Yeah, the character. Okay. Simon. Yeah. Yeah. He's determined. He's determined and he has so much heart. Yeah. I don't really, I don't think I choose any of these characters. <laughs> okay, maybe Maddie. Yeah, Maddie would be good. Maddie's good. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, choose Maddie. Okay. <laughs> Are we talking character or like person playing the character? Because if it was person playing the character, of course I would want to investigate my own murder because I'm <laughs> smartest. But whose character I'd want, I want Maddie to be on the case. She clearly okay. is determined and she's very smart. And uh, I think she would do an amazing job. But yeah, other than that, I don't know. Maybe like, I, I like, I would want Spencer to do it too. I love Spencer. <laughs> Spencer was a popular yeah, one. Yeah, I, I love him so much. And he's he's also very smart. We've had, he knows, I feel like he knows the most about me. Him and Rainbow, like, know the most about me as a person. So I feel like they could really, they like, were. trace those steps back and figure it out how I died. Yeah. I trust him. All the stuff. <laughs> I, I would choose Simon. He's pretty good. I would, I would choose Sandra just because I feel like Simon can actually get himself killed. There's some close calls, and he might end my investigation pretty soon. The thing about Sandra, her being, you know, older, and there's a lot more heart. I trust her to to solve it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Megan, are you related? We're brother and sister. Yeah. A lot of people assume we're married, and then we're like, ah, uh, no, no, that's not the vibe. That's, that's not the, yeah. That's not yep, it. yep. Okay, well, congratulations. I watched a couple of the episodes, and I absolutely love it so far. I only got three though, so I haven't seen all of them. But. <laughs> So how do you guys, as a brother and sister do, how do you feel working together for this? Oh, it's the best. Oh, we wouldn't have it any other way. No, Megan yeah. is truly, this is gonna sound like it's just for the, the cameras or whatever, <laughs> like this is my best friend in the world. Um, we've we've kind of been doing this since we were kids and the dream was always to get to do it now. And, and, and so we're thrilled. Yeah, we got really lucky in that we don't only get along, we just work really well together. So it's been, it's true. I can't imagine doing it with anybody else. Yeah. And I definitely couldn't do it alone, so. Yeah. Did you get along as kids or did you bicker as kids and now you get along? We Not really. Freaks. We got along as kids. Yeah, we we, along. we're just very compatible. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, it's it's boring, actually. <laughs> no, <laughs> we no good fight stories from childhood. <laughs> OK, so if you guys, each of you. So say you had to choose one of the characters from the show to investigate something that happened in your personal life. Who would you choose? Ooh. That's great. It's a good question. Yeah. She's a character in the show to investigate something in our personal lives. Personal or... lives. To so say a scandal happened or something. Oh, oh, I would probably put I'd put Rhonda on the case. I'll tell you what. She <laughs> would she would uh she'd have a lot uh, of thoughts. I would say Simon only because I think he will do anything to get information. He he's really just, he's he really puts he's himself a dog, out he's there. He's a dog with a bone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think I probably at this point I might put Maddie because mm -hmm. she's oh, yeah. too. At this point, Maddie's learned how to become a detective. She hasn't much choice. That's mm -hmm. right. So That's I think true. I would probably when she's through with her own, I would make her. Yeah, I would not, that. Would not, yourself yeah I'm not going to yeah. interrupt her journey. Be selfish in this moment. Once you yeah. figure out what happened to you, help me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and how would you say that your character in the show relates to your own personal school experience? I don't know if you did high school like online or in person, but how would you say your school experience related to your character? I was homeschooled, um, so I think I definitely lived out my high school experience through Claire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Xavier uh, is a little bit more, I mean, I guess before the events of this show, I, I think he approaches high school with a lot less, like, um, he's not as much of an overthinker. I think he's yeah. kind of just, he sees that in four years, this will all be a memory. Yeah. and. And but Spencer is just always worried and overthinking. So. <laughs> okay, who from your own personal high school experience, who re, who do you, which character do you re, relate to the most? Ooh, that's pretty easy oh. thing for you. Who is it? Well, I'm a cross between Charlie and Rhonda. Oh, I believe. But that. either I'm probably an amalgam between the two. But definitely, yeah, those two would be the most. I think. I mean, I, it's. I mean. Yeah, Charlie and Rhonda. Yeah. What about you, Meg? I don't know. I'm I'm struggling. I want to say kind of somewhere between Maddie and Nicole. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I'd probably say somewhere between Maddie and Simon for me. Yeah. 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 Did you ever did you put like kind of right in there any personal experiences that have happened to you or it's all like new con like that you came up no, with? No, you know what's so fun is we had an amazing writer's room of uh, seven people, eight people? No. I can't less, count. Yes. Um, but most. but everyone sort of brought personal stories from high school or things from their lives into this. So there's a lot of the writers in this mm -hmm. series yeah. um, that I think is kind of amazing. I sort of, I, every great writer's room I've worked in, people have to feel safe enough to share parts of their lives, particularly high school, which can be very painful. Mm -hmm. But we tell stories and we talk about moments and we talk about um, missed connections and you know, this is also a generation too where they're looking still at people because of social media from high school. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I didn't even, didn't even have that, you know, in some ways. But like everyone's still plugged in and still thinking about that time in a different way. If that makes yeah. sense. Oh mm. my God. Yeah. It's so different now. I mean, Rhonda's very like a lone wolf and doesn't really want to connect with anyone. It was kind of doing, she is doing her own thing and doesn't trust anyone. And I, I relate to that. I, I think high school. I sort of found it easier to be alone uh, than find a group of good friends, kind of knowing I was leaving type of yeah. feeling. So because I didn't feel like I belonged, it was easier to just belong alone. That's so sad. <laughs> this whole interview this is really just sad. sad. <laughs> what about you? I, f I feel like I can relate to Maddie having two friends that are really close and everyone else is just mm. like, doesn't really know her. I feel like that was sort of me as well. I had two best friends and it was just like our, they were my entire world. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, Charlie being everyone's cheerleader, I think that kind of, I, I resonate with that of just wanting to be the fun, like friend there. You're the hype friend. You're yes. the friend everybody wants, hyping them up everything. How do you guys relate to your, character in your personalizer you guys complete opposites i think i relate with nicole in the artist aspect where she's like into photography and graphic design and i did that in high school and just like the way she is with her friends because i had a small group too i was sort of a floater she was more like just with those two friends maddie and simon but um i still had my little group the way she does so that's how i resonate with her yeah i think simon and i are are very different in the most intense ways, I mean, he's, he's braver and he's much more intuitive than I, but our similarities would be, we're both a little, uh, I'd say geeky, you know, <laughs> we love information, we love trivia. And I think him and I kind of like to be uh, smart Alex a little bit with our friends. Yeah. And have you watched any of it yet? We have, we've, yeah. um, they sent us a little bit of the couple episodes and i love how the show looks and everyone's performance yeah same how do you it, feel uh, it has a different feel to it so like it feels yeah. a lot more real and raw compared mm -hmm. to other young adult shows i think 
how do you feel watching yourselves? Like, do you critique yourselves? Do you hate watching yourselves? Do you love it? I like, I don't think I cringe as much as I used to, but there is one scene. That, do you remember the scene where we're in the hallway in the back while Wally and Maddie are talking? Yes. And I remember on set, we were actually like having a laugh attack during that scene, <laughs> but you can't really see it in the background. <laughs> but I remember, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, we couldn't stop. Like, we had to like stop and breathe because of how much we were laughing while we were shooting. <laughs> I, I used to hate watching myself, but I knew that in order to achieve any kind of improvement there needs to be some assessment sometimes and yeah. what I managed to do is create this trick where I have a really bad left eye so I cover my right eye I watch the whole episode blurry yeah. or I like I hold my breath and then I watch it like uh with, with no air I just there's some kind of distracting like it's you're watching it new for the first time now yeah you're like, like an you're outer body experience is that what you mean like sort yes, yes. yeah yeah <laughs> What a good trick. Mm -hmm. And then if you could choose two words to describe the series, each of you, what two words would you choose? Ooh. Spooky fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, babe. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm. Frustrating mystery. Oh. Ooh. I don't know if frustrating is a great word for it, but that's good. Yeah. I, um real and <laughs> surreal whoa uh, love. love oh nick how'd you love come up with that? that was really good that was really good yes. love that. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for real and congratulations on the series thank, thank you. you see you later